Welcome to another edition of David Bryant Reports. I am David Bryant. Well, here we are in the midst of the beginnings of what is known as the trial of the century. The first time a U.S. president has ever been put on trial for criminal uh, charges. Uh, it's, it's supposed to last about uh, six weeks. There are 34 felony charges. If he's found guilty, that'll be maybe up to four years in prison. I suppose this will be the most watched event of any trial or of many, or even any other event since the O.J. Simpson trial so many years ago. Now, as you watch it and you ask, well, what does it take? What's the challenge that Donald Trump faces in order to get justice? And he faces three, three challenges. One is the judge, who's the referee of what goes on in the court. Second, the prosecution, who wants to bring out the evidence that will uh, convince a jury that... Uh, Mr. Trump is guilty, but thirdly, then he faces the jury who must render the final verdict. It's quite a drama, and like I said, it's going to be going on for some time. But even now, as I've watched it unfold, I've, I've put on <laughs> my King Jesus glasses, and I began to, to see through this trial, I began to see the Lord Jesus Christ in a whole new way, because he combines in himself all three roles, the, the, the judge, the prosecution, the jury, which makes him who he really is. He is the judge of all. Now, we know that Christ is supreme in terms of his being our redeemer, our savior, uh, our healer, but he's also redeemed in terms of being the judge of all. Now, we know he said in one of his parables in Matthew 25 that at the end of history, he would sit on the throne and he would gather his flock before him and separate the sheep and goats. Now, Without getting into the meanings of that parable, the fact is he represents himself as the final judge at the end of history. But in another sense, he's also a judge all along the way, even at this very moment. For example, take Isaiah chapter 9, those very familiar words that call him Wonderful Counselor, uh, Mighty God, Prince of Peace, Everlasting Father. Glorious terms. But have you ever noticed what precedes and comes after those statements about who Jesus is right now. What precedes are three promises in Isaiah 9. One, that Israel's enemies, our enemies, will be shattered. Number two, that they, that we, will be brought out of the valley of the shadow of death into the full radiant light of God's glory. And number three, that all of this will take place through a son that God will give us, upon whom he will lay the entire government. <laughs> Now, you think about the whole government of the United States being laid on one person? I mean, you'd have to be the judge of all to take up that role. But then after mentioning those characteristics, wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, everlasting father, Isaiah 9 goes on to say, and of the increase of his government, in other words, it's going to keep growing. There will be no end. And then it says this, he will uh, create and uphold righteousness and justice from that time forth and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will accomplish this, which is sort of saying Jesus is ruling and reigning right now. He's growing his kingdom. And one of his chief characteristics is justice. He is the judge of all. The whole government of this universe rests upon his shoulders. That's why it says in Hebrews 4, we're, we're laid bare before him with whom we have to do. That, that's current. That's present tense. That's who we are before Jesus. He sees everything about us. That's why Paul says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 5 that one day we believers are going to stand before the judgment of the Lord Jesus Christ to be judged for the things we've done in our bodies. Now, this doesn't have to do with salvation has to do with how we have been faithful in following Jesus once we gave our lives to him. But what he will be judge of then, he's already uh, taking note of that right now. I mean, what he will be judge of all, he's the judge of right now. He's the judge of all, including what's going on down in lower Manhattan. You know, a few days ago, we had another one of our breakthrough Zoom prayer events. Now, this goes on quite regularly if you'd like to know more about how we are gathering together across the nation to, 
to pray for an American Christ awakening, you go to the website ChristNow.com, scroll down, and you'll see all about Breakthrough, and you can sign up and become a, a part of it with us. But in this last time of Breakthrough, we, we took this theme of Jesus being the judge of all, and we prayed through it during that 30-minute gathering called Breakthrough. First thing we did was we prayed before Jesus as judge of all for the spiritual well-being of President Donald Trump. That's not a political prayer. That's a kingdom prayer. Secondly, we, we also prayed before Jesus as the judge of all that the trial in lower Manhattan would bring out the truth and bring it to the light, not just for the sake of those who are on, on trial, but for the sake of the whole nation. We need to see what's really going on. Thirdly, we prayed before the judge of all the earth that God would do a whole new work in our nation to bring us to brokenness, to bring us to repentance as a nation, to bring us to see where injustice and unrighteousness prevails, and to cause us to come to an awareness of Jesus as judge of all and as a nation to turn around and come to him and trust in him for our salvation because our judge wants to be our savior. And then fourthly, we also prayed for the spiritual well-being of the church in America, that we would come alive in the Lord Jesus Christ, that we too would come to repentance. In fact, it needs to happen with the church first before it's gonna ever really happen for the nation. Come to repentance and revolution, a Christward revolution that only the judge of all the earth can bring about in the midst of our lives right now to break us and remake us into everything he wants us to be. And then finally, we prayed together for the, before Jesus as judge of all, that he would bring forth an American Christ awakening, that he would increase his kingdom work in his people and in this land, that he would establish and uphold righteousness and justice in a whole new way, that he would do it in a way that reveals his saving glory, not only to this nation, but to the nations of the world. And I invite you to continue praying with us along those same lines. Well, that's my report for today. I invite you to join me next time as we continue to look at the events of the world around us through the spectacular supremacy of God's Son. I'll see you then. Mm -hmm.